for a start, I'd like for you guys to look up at the screen. And we'll wait until it starts here. Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to a land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and he took his nephew Lot with him and set out for the land of Canaan. All right, so that was the review instead of me speaking it. Um, and so from there, the story continues in Genesis 12, chapter seven, uh, verses 7 and 8. Tonight's topic is going to be about Abraham's altar. Um, if you guys like to follow with me on the screen, uh, the verse is going to be uh, put on there. It's, uh, again, Genesis 12, verse 7. It says, The Lord appeared, and we talked about this last time of the different revelations of how God reveals himself to us. So the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your descendants I will give this land. And so, I highlight, I underline the important parts, he built an altar there to the Lord God who appeared to him. He left that place, went to the hills east of Bethel, and he pitched his tent. With Bethel to the west and I to the east, he built an altar there and called the name of Adonai. My question to you tonight is, how much do you seek the God of the universe? The Lord, it's, the Bible says, love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul. That's the God that speaks to you, the one that gave you his commandments, the one that has angels, the one that answers your prayers, and the one that controls history. The God that has the power to send you to hell. And the God that can take your life. And also the God that can bless you financially as well. Do we really care about him? Do we know him? Abraham was considered God's friend. And why? Because he cared to know him. Do you really care to be his friend? Or do you care at all about God? That's my question to you tonight. Or do you see yourself as, God doesn't really affect me at all. Um, I'll get to know him when I get to know him. I'll do my schooling. I'll do college. And later on in life, I'll, I'll see about committing my life to him. Let me party, enjoy high school, have fun at college, and then I'll get around to him. Do you see him with a God? Do you see God with a long beard sitting up in heaven? Or do you see God with a baseball bat just trying to hit you when you do something wrong? Or he hits you with lightning when you curse his name? Or you only call on him in prayer when somebody dies? How do you see God? You see, what's interesting is that we're all afraid of demons. And we're all afraid of evil spirits. Matthew 12, 44 and 45 says, When an unclean spirit comes out of a person, it travels to the dry country, through the desert, like Israel, Arizona, Africa, the Middle East, where there is desert, seeking rest and does not find it, then returns to the house it left with seven other spirits, so that the person is worse off than before. When that verse is read, a lot of people tremble and get scared. But why aren't we in awe or scared of the greatest spirit, which is God? The God of all spirits. The God that has the most power. Why don't we ask him in prayer for help so that when he cleans us, he gets rid of everything and there's nothing that's going to come back. And that he can fill us up with his, with his spirit, which is a holy spirit. I'm going to tell you of an experience that I shared at our last small group meeting. I really want to see God in person, as Moses did, and that's my desire to see his glory. So I've asked God, what is the first thing I need to do in order to see your glory? And I expected a standard answer, 
but I got a non-standard answer, which was, he said, quit the movies. To which I responded, but why, Lord? It's, you know it's not a sin. And he said, you didn't ask me if it was a sin. You asked me to see my glory. So from that point on, I had a desire to quit this bad habit. And so I prayed fervently to get rid of it. It's an evil spirit. So only after fasting, uh, I was actually doing the Daniel fast at the time, which required no TV, that I was able to stop. My point is that you have to have a true desire, and some spirits and habits are only changed with fasting and prayer. The thing is, I can't change you through a sermon. Your parents can't change you by talking to you, and your friends can't change you, your in, can't change your innermost desire. It has to be you that wants it. And how do you communicate that? And that's through prayer. So let's look at Abraham's life. His altar, which is the altar of prayer. My question is, is there a disconnect in your life between life and church? Or life with your parents or the one at school or with your friends? Or with your boyfriends or with your girlfriends? Or at work? You see, all areas are tied. They're all in one. And the way you're in one area should be the same way you are in another area. You can't be a double agent. You can't be one person at school and one person at church. You can't be somebody else with your girlfriend or boyfriend and somebody else at church. You can try, but you can only be James Bond for so long before you're found out. So let me illustrate it for you. If you put in a jar oil and water and you shake it, what happens after a while? The oil rises to the top. That's what's always going to happen in your life as long as you're a double agent. You see, Abraham's story at the core is about finding God and then finding his identity in God. So what does Abram do? Abram builds an altar, a place where he can call upon God. And now I have a message to the parents as well. Do your children know where the altar in your house is? Do you sacrifice on the altar together? together? And what I mean is do you pray together on the altar? Do you call upon the name of the Lord together? You want them to pray in church and to have courage to raise their voices to God. But when do they hear you pray? Beside in church. Do they hear your tone, your voice, your actions, if you raise your arms or not, if you cry or not, if you raise your voice in anguish or desire to praise God? And I want to show a small clip, it's a five second clip of the way Isaac saw Abraham praying as an example. Do your children see you like that ever? At least once? Do they have from who to learn? And lastly, do you pray in English with them? I know it's hard, but if you want them to make an effort to pray in church, then you have to make an effort as well. And are you first making the effort and showing them how to pray? Do you show them that as uncomfortable and hard and difficult that the language barrier is if you still attempt to pray in English? Because that's how, it is, that's how hard it is to, for them to pray in church as well. And if they're not used to a life at prayer at home, then how do you expect them to pray in church? And I'll back finally to you guys, the youth. My question is, where is your altar? Where do you call upon the name of the Lord? The name of Adonai. The God of the universe. And my question is, do you really want to change? 
Yell, out, yell it out to him if you really do. If you truly desire it. And if you're happy, praise his name. Or yell, I need change. Change me because I can't do it. Day after day, and tell him what's your, tr your heart's true desire. But my question is, is it your true desire? Do you really want to change? And if you do, ask him. Why wait? You see, Frater Evrancilla said while he was here and he visited us and had a sermon, he said, why does a car accident or a health problem or any other evil have to befall you before you make a change? Why not make it today? How long will you postpone it? And if you can change with prayer, add fasting to it too. The Bible says in Mark 9.29 that some spirits only come out by prayer and fasting. Where is your altar? The place where you pray. Where is your prayer life? And how do you communicate with the God of the universe? You see, Abraham set two altars in two different verses, one right after the other. He made it a habit. Our altars are our prayers. And where is your altar of prayer? And parents, where is the altar with your children? If you want the change, make the change. I mean.